I look at like, where was my energy best spent? Where did I really come alive or what depleted me? And I think that that kind of goes in alignment with like the to-do list, which we're so good at creating, but the not to-do list, which we oftentimes neglect. Hey, my name is Jenna Kutcher and I am obsessed with all things business, marketing numbers, and helping you to navigate both the messy and the magical seasons of this thing called life. I'm a small town mama who took a $300 camera, grew a successful photo biz, and now I work from home and run a seven figure online business. I teach you the tried and true secrets to building a career you adore. Shy away from the real talk? (laughs) No way. Money, hardship, growth, loss, and marketing are all topics we discuss here. Think of this as your one-stop shop for happy hour with a gal pal mixed with business school. Pull up a seat, make sure you're cozy, and get ready to be challenged and encouraged while you learn. This is the Gold Digger Podcast. New year, new goals, new podcast recommendations. Because if I know anything about you, it's that you love to work with earbuds in, listening to business advice and entrepreneurial secrets from the best of the best. So let me introduce you to my pal, John Lee Dumas, host of the hugely popular Entrepreneurs on Fire podcast. Each weekday, John features an interview with entrepreneurs changing the game and digs into topics that are interesting as they are actionable how to start your own business during a global pandemic, how business schools set founders up for failure. And the secrets to scaling a business are just a few of those conversations that he's having over on EO Fire. Listen to Entrepreneurs on Fire wherever you get your podcasts. Okay, the crazy thing about this episode is that as we're listening to it, it's the end of the year. Can you believe it, Kylie? I cannot believe how fast, but also how slow this year went because we packed so much into it. (laughs) Yeah, it's been so wild shifting from the world as we knew it in one way with quarantine and and being home and everything to kind of things opening back up and, and calendars filling up and things like that. And I think we're all just kind of trying to navigate what a new normal is. And I don't even know if we've fully figured it out yet. No, I think as a general humanity, we're still going to be figuring out normal for quite some time. I know. So it's kind of wild because we're recording this in advance because as you know, I'm probably snuggling a tiny little baby or chasing after a toddler. But when we were looking at the end of the year and a topic that we haven't covered yet, but something that is a practice that I do in my business is really figuring out, well, how do we navigate the end of this year without throwing it away, without waiting for January 1st? But how do we navigate through this part of the season before we enter into the season of resolutions and new goals. So today is all about inventory and we're going to walk through what that means and what that looks like. So are you ready, Kylie? I'm ready. I have to say this is one of my first jobs. Well, the first job where the end of the year didn't feel like a frantic, just get it done good (laughs) enough. And let's, you know, get to the holiday parties, which are an important part of this time of year. But I love how intentional you are at using this time of year for something very specific. And the energy is very good. It doesn't feel frantic. It doesn't feel like just getting it done to get it done. I think a lot of that comes from the way that we approach the entire rest of the year and also just to our culture of not operating from a place of urgency. I don't know about you, but like even the word urgency makes my cortisol spike. And so when I think about this time of year and even just to how busy it is in terms of holidays and how emotional it can be based on relationships or families or other things that you're navigating outside of the Christmas presents in Santa Claus, I think that it's this really beautiful time of year to kind of hit the pause button. And I don't think people do that enough. Oh, no, totally. Because like you said, we are looking ahead to the next year and making like all these plans for how we're going to completely transform our lives uh, on January 1st. But that transformation and that evolution, it all starts before the clock ever strikes 12. Yes. So So, should we dive in? (laughs) Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So what do you do before we hit January 1st and move into a new year of the Gold Digger podcast and the Jenna Kutcher brand, all of it? 
Yeah. So I think that this is a time where we need to invite reflection into our life. And I know that sounds kind of silly because I balance this notion on this idea of like, don't throw away the final week or weeks of the year just because we're waiting for that fresh start that we so deeply yearn for. But I also think that it's a really powerful time to reflect and kind of analyze and assess like, how do I feel as we close out this year? And I know that sounds so weird, but as I walk you through my process of taking an inventory, you're going to see that it's not just rooted in numbers. And so I want to really look at like, am I exhausted? Am I burned out? Am I inspired or excited? Like, how do I actually feel? And I think that that's a question we don't ask ourselves a lot. And I think that the answer to that can actually really guide us forward in a new and beautiful way. And so it's balancing this desire to kind of make every day and every week count and to really be present as we close out the year, but also being really, really like intuitive and in touch and assessing like, how do I feel when I finish this race? And if anyone's ever run a race, Drew and I actually ran two full marathons in a past life. I swear to God, I feel like like forever ago, but you can see when people finish a marathon and they are like dead, right? Like they literally look like the walking dead. Yes. They look miserable. You wonder why that, like, would you ever do this? That, yeah. Like tinfoil blanket around them. Yes. <laughs> like, and then you see those people who are like soaking in the moment and like savoring and like tears going down their cheeks, like, and, and really understanding and basking in that achievement. And I think that those two things can kind of illustrate how we can sometimes feel leaving a year exiting a year and entering a new year. So I think first, just take a little moment to assess how do you feel right now? And what does that feeling tell you about this past year? And how can it guide you into the next year? One thing that I know you do, and maybe the end of this year is a little bit different because you you have a sweet little baby. But I remember you saying you were going to take a couple of days, I think it was last year, and you posted a photo of your journal and a bathtub filled Mm -hmm. with sudsy soap and a candle burning. And it was your time to literally just reflect and dream. And I don't think we give ourselves enough space. At least I know I don't. We don't give ourselves enough space to reflect and dream. Yeah. You know, what's funny, Kylie, is that this has been a practice for over a decade. So True and I recently were combing through boxes in our garage and I found two Jiffy Lube receipts. Stay with me. Okay. (laughs) On the Jiffy Lube receipts were, one was a gratitude list of Drew and I's adventures. And this was from back in like 2008. So before we were even married. And the other one was like what we visualized for ourselves in five years, which is also just kind of crazy. And so it was funny because it was like, Jenna will drive a Honda Pilot. (laughs) We'll live in Minneapolis. (laughs) She'll work for Target Corporate. Like we had all these like interesting visions and, and most of them didn't necessarily come to light. But finding those receipts that were in the glove box of Drew's old Honda Civic made me recognize that like one gratitude has always been a part of our practice, both as a couple, but also as individuals. And then vision has been another part of that process. And what's so funny is that I did not feel a single ounce of angst when I saw the vision and saw the things that maybe didn't come to fruition or didn't unfold the way I thought they would, because what actually happened was so much more beautiful than I could have Mm -hmm. thought. But I thought it was so cool that like we as a couple on a road trip were already having these conversations before we were even married. Oh, I love that. You, I feel like you out of anyone I know, you're so good at leaving your future self little smile moments and little yes. reminders of how far you've come. And that makes me want to reignite my journaling hobby, which always is really strong for like January 1st <laughs> till the 5th. And then it, I yeah. have so many half written in moleskin journals. It's ridiculous. <laughs> Here's my one piece of advice coming from someone who's kept a tiny journal for almost three years is that Coco, when Coco was born, we started just a one sentence a day journal for her. Oh, and it's a okay. five year journal. And people like went nuts over it. They sell them at Target. But if you just Google like one sentence a day journal, it can be for mothers or just for individuals. 
And what's so cool is you get to see the transformation year after year. And I'm seeing it from a motherhood standpoint, but just seeing like what we did three years ago or when Coco said her first words or that one time we were in Hawaii and this happened, it's really cool. And we just keep it on our kitchen island so that it's literally like right in front of us every day. And we have a pen next to it and we just pull it out. And that has been like my one parenting win (laughs) in terms of chronicling my child's life. But it is something for people that have this intention of like leaving themselves love notes or journaling and you don't stick to it, the one sentence a day might be the thing that gets you off of that. I think I I think I can do one sentence. I I know. Yeah, I'm going to manifest that I can do one <laughs> sentence every day next year. So when it comes to the business, how do you start to take inventory from, I guess, more of a numbers perspective? Yeah. So it's so interesting, but I think about this process as being really holistic. So when I say take inventory, obviously there are things like looking at accounting statements, sales figures, payroll spend, ad spend, number of followers, number of viewers, subscribers, like any sort of data point, because I think data can leave us clues. And I really love data in so many ways as someone who kind of balances the feminine and masculine side. The masculine side in me really loves loves data because it's just factual. You know, it's it's numbers. Numbers don't lie. So one of the things that I love to do at the end of the year or towards the end of the year before we close out is just pull everything that can give me information through data. And this should become a practice regardless of where you're at in your life or your business. Because what happens is, is a lot of times people don't do this step until tax season, right? You're already over a quarter into the new year. And then you're kind of realizing, you know, what I thought was working wasn't working, or I've been focusing on the wrong thing. And so I think that when we look at setting goals or resolutions, it's super important to have those grounded in data. I know for me, like I can hear all these different ideas of let's say health, but when I hear like a scientific fact or when I know what's true for my specific body, it helps me to stick to it more. And so I think that when we lean on facts and data and numbers, it can really help just kind of affirm the direction that we're heading. So that's where I begin is just all of those boring, but telling things. I run a lot of numbers. I love numbers and I really keep in touch with my numbers throughout the year. But at the end of the year, I like to look at everything from this bird's eye view and kind of see what that data is telling me. So that's part one. But beyond the financials, because I think a lot of people stop there when they kind of do an inventory or an analysis, is I want to do an energy inventory and a time inventory. Oh, that's interesting. (laughs) Yeah. So I've always looked at the way that we spend the three main things in our pursuit of dreams, in entrepreneurship, in side hustles, whatever that looks like, comes in the form of time, money, and energy. And those are our three biggest resources that we're expending on a daily basis. A lot of times people are only looking at the money side of things, which obviously is an important component of being a profitable business. But I want to look at an energy inventory. And this really hit me when I was preparing to become a mom for the first time. So I was looking at what life was going to look like when I finally got the gift of becoming a mother. And for those of you who know our journey, it took us three years. So it was a very long time of wanting and desiring and loss and navigating all of that before we actually got to have our dreams realized. And so When I went in to my first year of motherhood, I really asked myself, what do I want this to look like? And what do I want it to feel like? And for me, energy is a huge thing. And so there are so many opportunities that are presented to you as an entrepreneur that feel shiny, that feel like, oh, this could be my big break. But a lot of those often require a lot of energy. And a lot of times they don't often yield results. And so when I look at my year at a glance, I pull up things like our launch calendar. I look at different commitments I made, whether it's online coaching or speaking at an event. I look at different affiliate things we've done. Like I look at like where was my energy best spent? Where did I really come alive or what depleted me? And I think that that kind of goes in alignment with like the to-do list, which we're so good at creating, but the not to-do list, which we oftentimes neglect. And so when I went into my first year of motherhood with Coco, I literally blacked out my entire calendar. I had not a single commitment on it because I wanted to give myself the autonomy to make those decisions in real life, knowing how my child was developing, how breastfeeding was going, 
Was I getting sleep? Did a trip away sound great or did it sound like it would just rip my heart out of my chest? And I know that that's a privilege and and the ability to black out a year like that. It didn't mean I didn't work. That's actually the opposite. But it, it gave me the opportunity to make decisions closer to the moment than to agree to things in advance and then be upset about where my energy was going. So an energy inventory is really important. And I think that it can also identify places where you might need extra support, where you should create boundaries of saying no to things, where you can find things that actually make you come alive that you might not be spending or investing enough time into. And then that leads us into a time inventory. Looking at how you're spending your days and thus how you're spending your life, really. And I think of the Steve Jobs quote where he's like, if I wake up today and I knew it was my last day and I wasn't excited about how I was about to spend it, then something's got to change. And I kind of butchered that, but that's kind of along the lines of what he was saying. And I think in terms of a time inventory, when we really look at like, what is our time going into? Is it in the right places, especially navigating motherhood and entrepreneurship? Like, I want my time with my children to be meaningful and intentional, but I also want my time in my business to be impactful. And so looking at where is my time best spent? How do I divide up the 24 hours in my day? How do I navigate in a space of gray where not everything is black and white, where not everything is positively clear or segmented or compartmentalized? And what needs me the most right now? And I think that's something that I've had to learn in motherhood is, you know, there are times where my children need me and that's where my time is best spent. And there's times where I need to invest more of it into my business to get this thing off the ground or to get this idea out into the world. So long story short, at the end of the year, I just think it's really a beautiful time to take an inventory. Of course, lean on the data and the numbers, but also look at where your energy and your time are going, because I think those are our most undervalued resources. And those are the greatest indicators of how this year went and how we're going to journey into the next year together. As we look to the new year, you might be thinking about ways to hit the ground running with your business or even ways to help connect with your customers on a deeper level. We've talked about CRM platforms in the past, and I wanted to talk a little bit more about why they're essential for businesses in 2022. A CRM platform takes any customer interaction, like a sale from your website or clicking on your weekly newsletter, and it transforms that data into valuable insights. Insights like, when do my customers shop? And do my emails really get open more on a Monday? A HubSpot CRM platform is ready to help connect the dots between your business and your customers like never before. HubSpot is consistently working to make its products more connected than ever. With improved custom report builders, you can curate your data your way, making it super easy to review real-time reports on sales, marketing, deals, and more, all with just a few clicks. And if you're looking for cleaner data with a centralized system, the all-new Operations Hub Enterprise gives your team leads the ability to curate data sets for all users, meaning even faster and more consistent reporting. Learn more about how a HubSpot CRM platform can help connect your business in 2022 at HubSpot.com. My word of intention for like the last three years straight has been permission. Yes. I think hearing you talking about an inventory of not only finances, but energy and time, it's almost like you have to walk into that inventory and audit in a space of permission that you are going to give yourself permission to say no to the things that are too taxing on your energy and time and not leading to either a positive increase in your finance department or in your impact or, or, or whatever that looks like. But you have to give yourself permission at the end of the year as much as you're auditing to let go of the things that aren't serving you in the way that they should be. Absolutely. 100%. So how do you prioritize? I had this realization. We do a team check-in either by Zoom or just a quick Slack message every week. And Marissa, our integrator, she listed off the things that she was working on. And I was quite honestly 
shocked because I had no idea that some of these projects were going on behind the scenes. And it always seems like you have long range projects that are good for the business, whether it be like the SEO audit we went through and yeah. there's some other like digital media things that Marissa was working on and coordinating. And so knowing that a business usually needs maintenance, it needs like refining and restructuring, but it also needs room for new projects and new ideas and new exciting things. Like how do you balance all of the priorities and figure out what's going to lead your big three goals or whatever goals into a new year? I think it's shifted a lot. And I think part of that is the rat race that happens at the beginning, which I would argue is sometimes required. While I love to push back on hustle culture, and I don't necessarily think that it should become our norm, I do think it is common. And I think that now I operate from a space of like long term, right? Like nothing is overnight. And the things that I do today, I don't want them to just impact today or tomorrow. I want them to make an impact a year from now. And it's really changed our work pace, but it's also changed our priorities is we're looking at some of these tiny little nuanced shifts that can make a massive difference in results or in the way that it shows up. And one of the things that I do every year to make sure that I'm prioritizing the right things is starting with what does success look like for me in this season? And I've always, you know, held vision, just like that receipt from Jiffy Lube showed for like what a five-year vision would look like, but I've never kind of concretely held myself down to that vision. It's always just been, you know, this openness to like expansion. So for me, what really works, especially in this season of motherhood is planning by quarter. And I can really wrap my head around a three month, a 90 day time point of like, what are we going to be focusing on? What are we going to be working on? What are we going to be moving on? But beyond all of those things, I want to say, what does success look like for me right now? Like right now I'm on maternity leave. So success looks like the team is working on these behind the scenes projects, or they're investing in their own education to be learning new skills, or they're figuring out new systems or refining different things that we do. And so it's not necessarily this grind and success for me in this season looks like being with my family. But when I come back from leave, maybe success looks like launching this new thing into the world and figuring out, okay, so how do we prioritize our time, our energy and our money into moving that needle forward? And really, we kind of look at it as like there's one big goal each quarter, There's either one big launch, one big update, something like that. And then everything else we're working on supports that one big goal. And I think that a lot of times when people goal set, they make a list of like 10 things. Well, they don't break down when it's going to happen or the amount of work that's required to make it happen. And when they start to realize that they're losing steam or they aren't actually accomplishing those things, they feel defeated. And then they enter that whole shame cycle that we all know so well. So I think what we do so well is we really look at everything in terms of money, either in or out, energy and time. And while there might be shiny opportunities presenting themselves, if I can't hold it up and say, is this aligned with my definition of success for this quarter or this year? Does this make sense from a money, time and energy standpoint? And if I can't say yes to that, then the answer for that is no. And it's really allowed me to create really clear boundaries. And it's also just given us kind of this like focused vision as a team, which I think is so important. So inquiring minds would like to know, I know we're recording this well in advance of when it airs, but have you started thinking about next year, 2022? Yeah, absolutely. I am really excited for the new year because one thing that I've been just really exploring in my own life over the past year, and I've brought it up in many episodes, is just this idea of identity. And something that I've been thinking about is like my identity continually shifts and, you know, with this new baby and now we're a family of four and I'm a mom of two and, you know, with the business and where we want it to go and what I want these next few years to look and feel like, I feel like this coming year is going to really reflect 
the changes in who I am and in what I love and what I want to share with the world and kind of take me out of some of the spaces that I've been known in and invite other people to step into those places so that I can kind of expand and continue to grow and evolve. So I am really excited about this year and I'm also just very open. I feel like I'm approaching it with like open hands and not like white knuckle grip to kind of see what it presents. And, you know, it's going to be a lot of family time, of course, but there's this piece of me that is like, you know, I feel like we're at this pivotal time in history where women are asking themselves, you know, what do I want and what does success look like for me? And how do I carve my own path and what are my gifts and how do I share them with the world? And the conversations that I have both online and offline are just really rich with these questions that maybe we weren't quiet enough to ask ourselves until 2020 happened. And so I feel like we're kind of on the cusp of this revolution of women really not just taking inventory when it comes to money, but taking inventory when it comes to things like energy and time and trying to navigate what does it look like when we take like the woo and it meets the work? Like how do we mix in these intuitive, like spiritual experiences with like the hard work required to get a dream off the ground? And like, how does that come to life? And those are just questions that I've been asking myself, but those are things that I'm excited to dive into more in this coming year and explore them not only for myself, but alongside of our community where I think a lot of people are seeking answers. Do you have any maybe silly, not silly, because no goals are silly, but do you have any kind of fun goals that you've set for yourself personally, knowing that this next year is going to look or maybe look a little bit different for you? One thing that I'm, I'm not afraid to admit is that I'm really excited to be done with pregnancy okay. (laughs) in the sense of, I feel like our journey has been five years of pregnancy and loss and pregnancy and loss and pregnancy and baby and pregnancy and baby, which has just been such a wild roller coaster, but I'm excited to feel like my body is entering a new season where like, it'll become mine again, obviously when I'm done nursing. So I've still got some time, but I am excited to just like nourish my body and move my body in different ways. So not necessarily from a standpoint of a scale, but just for how I feel. I'm also really excited to watch Drew transition from a dad of one to a dad of two and to kind of watch that side expand. And Coco is actually in Montessori school oh my God. and just learning and growing. And, and that was a really hard transition for us because she's literally spent every day of her life with us, the two of us. And so giving her up even just for four hours a day felt like we were passing off our child, but it was something that she really wanted and and great for her. And so that was a huge transition. And I think that, you know, we're just all evolving and we're all welcoming that evolution and that growth and that change. And it's going to be interesting. I think another thing that I want to do this year is just invite in more room for conversations, both online and offline, to just kind of find where people truly are at. I think we see so many highlight reels and stuff, but I think the rich conversations happen behind the scenes where people are asking themselves those bigger questions. And so just kind of having that more community and and opportunity for those real conversations. But beyond that, I'm excited to see how the business evolves and what it looks like. It's a lot, but it also just feels like really full in a beautiful way. I'm so excited to walk into yet another year with you and this team. It's been so special to be alongside you for so many of the changes and evolutions and pivots of the brand and business just in the last three years. So I can't wait for 2022 with you. What are you excited about, Kylie? Gosh, in the new year? We're recording this in advance. And so I'm hoping that some of the things that I've dreamed of for myself in 2021 will be a reality as I walk into 2022. But you know, there are external factors in that. I really, really am hopeful that 2022 will be the year that Christopher, my husband and I can move into a house 
and not have shared walls. We've lived in condos and apartments since we started dating many years ago. And so I want that so badly for us. And it feels like it's the it would be the beginning of the next phase of our lives together, starting a family, hopefully, God willing. And so I'm really excited to see what 2020 will reveal as far as my personal life and what the world will present as far as normalcy and what that will (laughs) hopefully afford us. Hopefully normalcy means the real estate market calms itself down (laughs) so we can actually make that dream of homeownership on a bigger scale, you know, a reality for us. So that on a personal level and gosh... That's like the biggest thing I can think about all the time. I send you Zillow listings like crazy. I'm sorry. (laughs) You and I are like realists. Like I would rather sit on Zillow than Instagram any day of the week. Like it's my favorite. (laughs) And critique these like multi-million dollar homes. I'm like, look at that choice they made there. Meanwhile, (laughs) oh, I love it. It's been such a joy. And Honestly, I just want to say thank you to our listeners for just another incredible year spent together navigating the unknowns and tackling the goals and doing all of the things that we've set out to do, whether big or small. I think it is such a gift that we get to create and that you get to listen in and hear these experiences and stories and strategies. And it's just something that we don't take lightly, not even for one breath. And so I just want to say as we start to think about what is to come. I hope that you can celebrate just how far you've come in this last year and what you've been able to overcome and the way that you've shown up for yourself and others. I think all I want for you to do is take a little time to reflect and to just lovingly look at just how incredible you are. And we create with you in mind. And so just thank you for being a part of this incredible community. It is truly such a gift. Cheers to that. Amen. You know, it's pretty awesome. I can now drink champagne. Now that <laughs> yeah, you can. Here. So <laughs> pretend like we're clinking glasses. Kylie, Uh-oh. thank you for all of your work in another incredible year at the Gold Digger podcast. And I'll let you help me with this one. Until next time, Gold Diggers. Keep on digging your biggest goals. I'm over here giving you a virtual high five because you just finished another episode of the Gold Digger podcast. Did that go by way too fast for anyone else? If you want more, head over to golddiggerpodcast.com for show notes and all the discount codes from today's sponsors. And if you're looking for a new crew of movers and shakers like you to bounce ideas and ask questions, be sure to join my exclusive community for gold diggers on Facebook. The link's waiting for you at golddiggerpodcast.com.